Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I want to thank all 826 subscribers. Uh, really had some tremendous growth last month. Um, and uh, did you know that only 15% of the people who view this channel are subscribers? So if you could do me a favor and just click subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. One thing I'd like to note also is uh, the playlists. Um, tab here and that one thing that I've started is uh, this getting started with ServiceNow playlist. So I'm going to fill this up and this is going to be one of the segments. I uh, did two previously, one on how to get started, meaning get your own personal instance, uh, which also had a little bit of information about um, the training um, that's available out there. And then also um, the difference between like waking up your instance and then hibernating um, and then if it goes past the, uh, the set amount of days, you know, it gets wiped and all that type of stuff. So those two videos are there. Um, and then today what we're going to be talking about is kind of a, con a continuing theme of, you know, what, what we do when we get started with ServiceNow. So I think, uh, at least having done uh, some implementations of the product for customers, that you want to probably figure out what your uh, user base is going to be, um, what groups you're going to put the users in, and then how you're going to map the roles to the groups. And you'll notice that I stated uh, mapping the roles to the groups um, and not the users because um, best practice is basically to align these two right here, the groups and the roles. And your users really shouldn't be getting um, roles on their own. Now, it all depends on the way your organization is structured. So I'm not saying there's a right and wrong. I'm just saying that's pretty much what best practice is. So I want to point that out um, in the beginning. So let's take a look. When we click on users, uh, so meaning right here, and basically if I were to do like a command click or a control click, um, then it would bring you to this screen right here. And I just wanted to show you one. We're not going to go through the mechanics of actually creating one. I'll let you do that on your own. But I wanted to show you what uh, Abraham Lincoln's looks like here. And just note a couple of things. So first off is the user ID. This is pretty critical. And if you're bringing in a whole bunch of users in an import set, um, you want to make sure that this field right here is unique um, and that you don't have two that are the same. So for example, um, if you already had Abe Lincoln set up and then you were doing, um, uh, let's see here, some sort of import um, or, or through an update set or just importing the data, um, the more recently created uh, name would take the duplicate user ID. So meaning that um, all the, the new ones, or excuse me, the new record would be the one that, um, uh, that trumps the other one. So also one thing to note here is this active box. So if the record is inactive, um, basically the user will not be available or be seen by the user except for the admins. So. Uh, that's one thing to, to take note of also. Then we go down here and we see our roles and our groups. And we're going to notice that Abe here, he's a member of this U.S. President's Group 2. So going back here, uh, if I were to do command click from my Mac, um, or if you're on a Windows, you probably hit Control Groups, um, and it would bring you to a screen that looks like this. Um, and then here we have our group, description, and then whatever else you'd want to have in this list right here. So um, this is some sort of demo group that was set up, U.S. Presidents 2. And if we were to click on it, um, it would bring you into a screen that kind of looks like this. One thing I want to note here, no roles. And I'm going to show you um, a reason why. Um, remember at the beginning I said users, you don't want to really give them a role. You want to give the group the role and then throw your uh, users in the group. It's just easier to manage that way. So if we look here, we have four group members. And we'll notice that Abe is one of them. Um, now we're going to move over to the roles, and then I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. So, uh, again, if we were to take a look at our roles here, brings you to a screen that kind of looks like this. It gives us a very uh, you know, simple name, naming convention here, there's a structure, and then it gives us a description. Um, so this is um, might be a little bit more advanced than just for beginners, but still you should know that um, you know, this is kind of what the screen looks like. And then also one thing, um, there's something called elevator privilege. So one role I wanted to highlight in particular is something called the security admin. Um, so if we look here, we see all these are 
um, not elevated privileges or elevated privilege equals false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to two finger click and I'm going to filter out all these. I'm going to show you the one roll out of the box um, that we're going to be able to see here, or excuse me, two, are these two that I created which have um, elevated privileges. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to elevate my role because I'm actually a security admin. So out of the box, there is one, uh, one user that has a security admin. And what security admin does is it's going to allow you to uh, modify, and it, and it gives you right here, basically the ACLs, or create new ACLs. So I'll show you how this works in just a second. So I'm going to elevate my role. Now you're going to see the security admin uh, name appears here. So again, you know, it didn't even appear um, unless I elevated my privilege. Now you're probably saying, well, um, how, how does this actually work in practice? So um, if I were to go to the ACL uh, module here under system security, we'll see here we have our access controls list. And this is what it looked like before when I didn't elevate my privilege. Um, now when I refresh, there should be yeah, the new button pops up right here, which allows me to create a new one. So um, again, this is something that's probably a little bit more advanced, but if you're starting out with the product and doing implementation for a customer, you're going to want to have your groups and your roles um, sorted out um, before you start adding users. So that way you can have a really good structure um, in place. So uh, moving over here, uh, looks like I was going to do something with edit members. Okay, so, oh, that's right. What I wanted to show you was uh, remember going back here to this group, uh, we had this U.S. President's Group 2, and then this is what it looked like inside. So here we have four users here, but there's no role assigned to this group. So one thing about Abe Lincoln is that he has some roles assigned to him individually, um, one of which is this ITIL role. So you're wondering, like, how does this affect me? Okay, or how does this affect the system of practice? So if we take a look at our assignment group here, U.S. President's Group 2, we can add it to this incident. So we can assign it to the group, but watch what happens when we go into the assign 2. Only Abe Lincoln is going to appear. And the reason for that is because he's the only one that has the ITIL group, um, or excuse me, the ITIL role assigned to him. So what I'm going to do is go to the group here, and I'm going to go to the roles, because basically what I'm saying is, um, the organization has said that we want U.S. Presidents Group 2 to be able to um, get incidents assigned to them. So now I'm going to go to roles. I'm going to click on edit. And I'll bring up a list. And I want them to have the ITIL role. I'm going to click save here. And you're going to see that you have a bunch of updates here. And it's given us, you know, adding role, all these different roles to this group. Now, when I refresh this, let's reload this form. And now let's go into the assign to. And we're going to see all four appear. So you see what kind of a headache that could have been if we just gave that ITIL role to, to each individual user. We'd have to do that four times. But if we create the group, put the map the role to the group, and then put the users in the group, or you could even put the users in the group first and then make sure that role is assigned. Um, it makes it a lot simpler for us. So I just wanted to show you, um, you know, what the, the effect is of that. I uh, also wanted to note a couple of other videos that are related to um, user registration. Um, I did a how to set up user self-registration in Kingston. So if your organization has a requirement where you want to um, have the users self-register, um, you can do that, and this video shows you how. And then there's a second one on um, enabling the auto-processing of uh, user self-registration at Kingston, too. So those are a couple other videos um, that you can take a look at that are related to this topic. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions. We've just unlocked the power of service now.